I'm absolutely thrilled with how this is looking. So we're going to just carefully pick this up and pop the film that forms very slowly lifting. It's really cool. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Today is my birthday. Not the day that this video is going up, but today when I'm painting is actually my birthday. I'm 33. Happy birthday to me. And I'm going to space for my birthday. So I did a little series on space back in March of this year, and I did, um, I did several different techniques, and one of them included, um, uh, inspired by Olga Sobi using her rings. It was an earth and a moon. And I've been wanting to do another one ever since, and I've just gotten busy with other projects, but today I'm doing one. So I'm making Saturn. So Saturn, of course, has rings. So it's harder to do, uh, you know, and I've thought about how would I do it, because you can make the planet, you can make the background, but then do you, do you swipe the rings while it's wet? Eh, I get scared by that. So I'm going to do this in two layers. I'm going to pour the Saturn and the background, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use, um, I think, masking fluid to, to block off certain areas so that I can swipe some beautiful, neat rings on it. So it's going to be at a bit of a tilt. The uh, rings are going to go this way, but it's going to be in the, in the dancing space inspired by Olga. So I have these are kind of my space background colors, and these are my Saturn colors. So if you look at pictures of Saturn, it's fairly bland. Um, you know, it's very smooth and kind of cream colored. So I've got, you know, sort of some white, uh, some ochre, uh, metallic, I don't remember if this is bronze or copper, gold, and then an unbleached titanium, which is kind of just my base tan. And then for my background colors, I have obviously a lot of black, but I don't want it to be just black. So I have some phthalo blue, I have some um, dioxazine violet, and then a few metallics. I have teal, magenta, and silver, just to add kind of some depth and some sparkle to the background and really make it flow. And I think I'm going to use some of the metallic magenta in the planet colors also, because in looking at pictures, some of them do show just a little bit of pinkish. So that should be fun. I, 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 my paint is mixed with water today, so it's just paint and water, very, very thin. Let me see if I can show you that consistency. So it leaves either no trail or practically no trail. This actually looks slightly thicker than I thought, but it's still very, very runny. I think that's all my details. Let's make a painting. So starting with the planet, I've just made a pencil sketch here for the planet so that I know generally where I'm going to do my design. Then once the paint's there, I'll put the ring on, sort of wipe around the edges, and add the background. Just like Olga does it, she has given us very good ideas with her Dancing Universe series. Love it! Let's put on the colors. So I want mostly this unbleached titanium. And I'm going to put it sort of... I'm going to be blowing it out in kind of that diagonal so that you get the feel of like the layers of gas in the planet. So I want, want to put the paint out more or less like that anyway. Um, for this ochre, it's such a strong color. I don't want large amounts of it, but I do like it as a way of adding, adding some variety and just brightness. And I think it'll blend well with the tan and with the white. So, but this one's definitely smaller amounts of that. Okay, and then gold, because we want it to shine. I can pour 
pour this one. And that's kind of all over. I don't want it to look exactly the same all over, and it won't. It's not going to look exactly the same all over because as you blow it, different colors are going to be more prominent. But I also, I want to make kind of some layers. So I'm having more of it down here, a little bit up there. And then for the white, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to have more of it up top and less of it down below. But I do want there to be some white because without white, a light colored painting just looks kind of bland. You have to have some, some white or it, it doesn't feel fully, fully bright. Okay, a little bit of white down here. Okay, but yeah, more, more white up top. This is looking like close to enough color. I'm going to put just a tiny, tiny bit of this metallic magenta, just in a couple of areas. And if it ends up being too bright, I will, I will take it out and re-blow. But I think just having a little bit of pink in there is going to make it really pop. Okay, a little bit more tan to fill these cracks. think this will be great. So I've got my little MHU hair dryer. Love this thing for detailed pores. Let's go ahead and blow it out. Oh, this is dreamy. The only place that I don't like is up here where I blew it two different directions and you can tell. So I think I'm just going to add a little bit more white. It's always hard to tell, like, is that outside of my line? I don't know. I, th I think I need to cover it just a little bit. So kind of matching the colors that I have there, I'm just going to blow this way to try to cover that line. Yeah, I think I'm really happy with that. Now, let me torch it to get some of the air bubbles out. I have some really pretty cells here in the gold, some here in the, the magenta. Just beautiful streaking going this way and that way. I am glad that I alternated the, the direction that I blew it. I think it just added detail because the ripples are kind of going in different directions. So I love that. Now it's time to put this in the middle and hope that I get it exactly where it's supposed to be. Okay, there it is. I don't know that that's exactly centered, but it looks beautiful. So now I'm going to kind of scrape away the extra paint here from the sides. And now instead of just leaving this paint here, I'm going to scoop up as much of it as I can and then wipe the rest of it because I don't really want these colors blending into the background. Man, I'm so glad that I added that magenta. Just having that little touch of pink. Oh, it's giving this so much depth. I love it. Okay, so now I'm just going to wipe up as much as I can.
There's a lot of paint wanting to flow out from under the embroidery hoop. So I don't know if I have more paint on there than I should. It'll be interesting to see what happens when I lift the ring and the two areas of paint merge. I will probably have to do a fair amount of cleanup with a brush after it's dry, but that'll be okay. Okay, I think the sides are clean enough. So now it's time to start adding the background colors. So again, it's gonna be mostly black, but I do want there to have depth and color in it so that you it's not just black. We don't want it to feel flat, but I am gonna start with black all the way around the edge. Okay, and then the two colors that I'm gonna mix with the black, I have Thalo Blue and uh, Dioxazine Violet, which are both very dark colors. So when this dries, it's gonna look essentially black, but you should be able to pick out, especially when it's varnished, just a little bit of color in there. Okay, I do have some of my background colors. They've come into the black, but I think that's just gonna add some wispy details. Should be okay. All right, so let's... Hmm, I'm having this go the wrong direction. I should have thought about See, I started like slanting it this way, but because my rings are going this way, I want the feel of the space to also be traveling this direction. So, so to have my color mostly in those areas, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do just a little bit of blending getting it covered, and then I'll add the metallics, and then we can blow everything out. But man, this color is just seeping like crazy. That's not so good. Okay, we'll blow it out. I don't have a whole lot of time to like mess with it, so we'll get it blown out. Uh, there's a very, very good chance that the edge is going to be quite messy and that'll be okay because I have black around the entire planet, which means once it's dry, I can just draw another circle and paint black over that edge and it'll be a perfect circle again. All right, let's start blowing this out. Well, this is cool. So for the most part, I just wanted to kind of like get the canvas covered. And then once it's covered, then I can like really start tweaking and adding those final details without having to worry about how am I going to get this edge covered. So I'm just going to get my, my corners, my sides, everything kind of a first layer. Then I'll add some metallics, but I'm getting some beautiful cells from the violet. So that's really cool. Okay, edges are covered, so I'm going to add just some little, you know, I don't want a ton of each color, uh, but I want there to be enough that like you can see it. Okay, so let's blow this out now. And so I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with the hair dryer 
really trying to move off extra paint because right now there's a lot of paint on here. Wow, this is spectacular right here. There's so many cells, it is so beautiful. And then this up here, like I'm just looking at the shimmer from the light coming down. It's really, the silver is really sparkling there. There's a couple places where the background color is still kind of like coming through. So I'm just gonna get that up as much as I can. But this is so pretty. And I love it so much. All right, let me torch really quick because I do see a few air bubbles. Last step before I pull up this ring is to add my stars. So I've got a little fan brush here and I'm just gonna dip it into the white, get a little bit on there. You sort of tap it once to get the big blobs off and then, oh yeah. So already it's getting to be very, very small specks now. So I'll get some more on there. It's amazing how it just comes to life when you add the stars. Love it, love it. And because white is a denser color, oftentimes when you add the stars, uh, the paint will sink just a little bit. So if that happens, you can always come in with a brush and add a few bigger ones just to make sure that you don't lose the effect. I'm even going to try to add a few on the side, which is hard to do without like making weird sideways streaks. But having some on the side really does, it just completes the entire painting, makes the whole thing look intentional instead of like, oh, you painted the top and the sides are just random. So if you can, Get your stars on the side, it's extra good. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this is looking. And now I just hope that when I pick up the ring, it doesn't all warp and shift. But like I said, I've got a plan for that, even if it does. So we're going to just carefully pick this up and pop the film that forms very slowly lifting okay so definitely the edge is messy and that is okay because i can either sort of cover it up with black or i can soften and smooth with um, my Saturn colors. So whichever way I need, whether I need to bring more color out or bring the black in, I should be able to do that without too much trouble. I am so, so happy with this. I mean, you know, you have, you have a vision in your mind of I want it to look beautiful. I want it to feel vibrant and lively. And something about this background with the blue and the purple, I know it's gonna darken but with the metallics and all of the cells that we've got, it's just, 
It's really cool. So, I'm finished for now. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, so this is just about the coolest thing I've painted recently. I'm so happy. Let's start with the planet itself. Look how shimmery that's going to be. And the magenta mixing with it has almost made it like a rose gold. But yeah, just the perfect amount of cells. Not too many cells, but enough that it's really interesting. You can see the edge is messy, but I can clean that up so much easier when this is dry. So the one section I'm realizing here, that's kind of a large wiggle, but it would be hard to change that now. And I think it looks fine. And I will be adding rings on top, so I don't know how much of that will be. This area right there will be shown exactly. But yeah, let's look at the starry background. So the blue and the purple are going to be a lot less noticeable when this dries, but then they'll pop out again when the varnish is on. This is my favorite section. Look at all those cells and just streaks and beautiful pockets of color. Nice cells from the purple there. Sorry that my ceiling is like making this look all weird. I think it's because I'm getting too close. And then up here, it's, it's much more smooth, but like you can see how shimmery that's going to be. So that's more sort of the blue and the teal and the silver, less of the magenta, but then some nice cells up there. So this is just going to be really, really cool. All right, so the next step is going to be cleaning up the edge of the planet. So I'll show you that next, and then we'll add the rings. All right, so let's get this planet looking nice. So I'm using my ring as a reference, um, but what I'm doing is I'm drawing a line about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch inside the ring. That way I get a perfect circle, but I don't have to fill out the entire area all the way to the ring. So I'm using white paint to mark on the, the black background because that shows up better than pencil, but then I used pencil on the lighter areas. So I'm just tracing around with a little bit of white paint, some of my pre-mixed white paint, just to make sure that I have a nice perfect circle that I can work with later. So now I'm taking away the ring and then I'm using some black paint to cover up the parts that stick out past the circle that I want to keep. And this is where it's really fun because it's very easy to just cover up a little bit of color with some black paint and make it look really crisp and perfectly circular. Once I'm all finished covering up the edges with black and that first layer of paint has dried, now I can start filling in the other areas with some white paint, some gold paint, whatever colors kind of match the planet. So it helps if you have leftover paints of all of your different colors and then whichever color you need you can fill in with that color. Sometimes I started with a base layer of white and then I added some gold and then I was able to add in whatever color I needed and it didn't have to be a really thick layer because I already had a base layer. Or sometimes I go okay I need copper all the way across and so I just put down a whole bunch of copper right on one section and that filled it in nicely. So now it's time to add Saturn's rings, and it took me a long time to figure out how I was going to do this, and I had a really good plan, and then the plan didn't really work. And so I had another plan, and then that plan kind of fell through as well. So what you're about to see is multiple steps in a row that it took me to get a really good end result. So what I'm starting with is I sketched out the rings I, like I made kind of a stencil of the shape I wanted and then sketched it in pencil on the canvas. Then I'm surrounding it with blue tape just so that I don't need to mask off a huge area with masking fluid. So I'm doing tape on most of the areas and then I'm going to use masking fluid or drawing gum by Pebeo to, um, to fill in sort of the, the more detailed edges. Because what I would like to do, my initial plan on the rings, was to do it as a swipe. I thought maybe a swipe would give me kind of some nice uh, you know, lines, make it look really smooth and beautiful. And so I wanted to be able to have a really clean edge where I could just pull up the tape, pull up that masking fluid section, and just leave a perfect segment of rings. So that's what I did. That's my initial plan. 
put on a nice coat of masking fluid, everything was looking great. So then once that masking fluid dried, I took my colors, which was unbleached titanium and gold and white, and also some Floetrol because I thought, okay, if I put down a base layer of Floetrol, just plain Floetrol, then maybe there will be some sections that are transparent, and wouldn't that be cool? So I started with Floetrol, and then I put my other three colors into a little cup and poured those out, and then I thought, okay, now I'll swipe across there. So I had my palette knife, and I had my canvas on a spinner so that I could do it in one just really controlled swipe. And it seemed like it was going really well as it went around, but you know how fluid art is. The paint really wanted to react. It made a whole bunch of bubbles, and there wasn't a lot of definition because it was all kind of that yellowish mustardy color. So then my next mistake was to peel up the tape while the paint was still wet. Now, often this isn't a problem, but I had so much paint on there that as I pulled it up, it just wanted to drip everywhere. And so even though I was able to use a brush and clean up the edges and clean up the drips, what I ended up with in the end was this thing that basically looked like a donut around my planet. <laughs> just kind of a big, boring donut that wasn't the right texture and it, it just didn't look right. It looked cheesy. And so when that dried, I said, okay, I gotta do something else with this. So I wanted it to look more streaky, more like the actual rings of the planet. So because sort of I had cells and stuff, I thought that's gonna make texture if I paint over it. So I started by getting just some gloss gel, which has texture in it. And I just painted that on with a brush, intentionally leaving as much streaking as I could um, to hide kind of the, the round cell shapes that were underneath. Because I wanted, once I painted over top of these rings, I wanted it to look streaky and, uh, you know, like, like rings. Like it was painted on with a brush instead of with cells. So I did that, and then once the gloss gel dried, then I painted some white over it just to kind of give a base layer so that then I could paint other colors on top. So this is uh, white paint of the fluid consistency. And you see that as I paint it on, it's quite thin. You can see all the little brush strokes. So this was just kind of a base layer. The next step, I used paint straight out of the tube. And I thought, all right, I'll do a white layer and then I'll brush on some of the tan and then I'll add some gold. And then I thought maybe I'll, I'll add some black so that it'll look like, uh, you know, transparent sections of the rings. It ended up just looking kind of juvenile and too streaky. So finally I was like, okay, I know how I'm gonna fix this. So I mixed up some paint, pretty much straight tube paint, but just with a little bit of water because it needed to be able to go on very, very well and very evenly, but uh, not really, really thick. So I'm starting with white, and then once I have a coat of white all over, you can see that it's still slightly transparent. Then I'm blending in some of the unbleached titanium, and that gives it a nice kind of mixture. So it's not solid one color, um, and so that blended really well together. And then I took gold, and I added that in, in more streaky segments, because I didn't want the whole thing to be shimmery gold, but I wanted it to have lots of gold all the way around. So finally, this, this was the technique that gave me the rings that I was actually quite happy with. I really like this smooth blended look. It looks much more realistic. So then once the rings were finished, then I took some black paint and just cleaned up a few little areas. First of all, I added a little bit of a shadow underneath the rings and then over on one side to be like the planet itself was casting a shadow on its own rings because I wanted it to look a little bit more three-dimensional. And adding just a small shadow can do a ton for making your painting look three-dimensional. And then I also used some black to neaten some of the edges of the rings uh, to make 
make the back edges squash down a little bit to make it look like it was receding into the distance. So just small things where as I had looked at the painting, I said, oh, I, I don't love this, I don't love this. So I was finally able to address each of those and fix all of the concerns. And I totally love how it looks now, so let me show you the finished painting. Okay, here it is all done. So this one, man, it fought me, especially these rings. So we'll start with the rings because I am really happy with how they turned out now. It's just kind of a soft, subtle wash. There's enough gold that it's kind of shimmery. You can see a bit of that black underneath, so it does look kind of transparent. And then there's just enough of that little drop shadow that it looks kind of three-dimensional. But yeah, look at the planet. So shimmery and shiny. And especially now that it's perfectly circular, it just looks amazing. Unlike when I first painted it and it looked kind of lopsided and weird. So it looks really great now. And then the background also, I added in a few stars, bigger stars, just to really brighten it up. Oh man, these details are so perfect. I do love that the phthalo blue and the purple darkened up because it's a very kind of subtle, dreamy effect now instead of being so bright and bold. This part's cool because it looks like metallic blue. What that is is the metallic silver underneath the phthalo blue, so it shines metallic blue even though I didn't have a metallic blue in there, so that's really cool. There's a little pop of silver up there. So these background elements, they're just, it adds just enough kind of magic to the background so that it isn't bland, but it doesn't totally overpower it. It still looks very much like space. So I am really happy with how this turned out. It took a lot more work than I was expecting, but I'm so glad that it finished up well. Thank you guys for joining me for this painting video. I hope it inspired you to try something new and to keep on working at something if you aren't totally satisfied with it. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever tried a planet pour like this? And do you think you'd like to try one after watching this one? I can't wait to see you all in the next video. Bye guys.